So I just recently finished playing Spirit Tracks. And the entire time I was playing the game, I kept coming back to this one thought. It kept rolling through my head. And that is, this game would be perfect for mobile, for smartphones. Because it's a game that you play with a stylus. So I thought, man, you could use your thumb on a smartphone and it would be the exact same thing. The DS has dual screens. So you could just, on a smartphone, you could stack the screens so that the top showed the map and the bottom was where Link was. And then you could use your thumb to control Link. Nintendo could just port this exact game and I think it would work really well. So I haven't played it, but would you have enough screen real estate to do that? I mean, you know, coming from having actually two screens to just one? In my head, I could imagine it just kind of stacked and I think it would be just about perfect. I don't know, the, the exact aspect ratios may have to be adjusted. Yeah. But I started thinking about this and the more I thought about it, the more things kind of just came together. Mm -hmm. And I started thinking, well, one, Nintendo is starting to get into the mobile market. Yep. They're starting to release all these smartphone games. And one of their big tentpole franchises that's not currently represented on smartphone is Zelda. That's true. And additionally, Spirit Tracks, they're not making money off this game right now. It's an old game. It's yep. just sitting dormant. They have this great game. Why not do something with it? Now, I think there are some pros and cons. And maybe... This is just an idea that maybe doesn't make a whole lot of sense once you get into the details. But I just kind of want to flesh out some of my thoughts on it and kind of give you some other ideas I had for it. You would think that the Zelda formula wouldn't really work with this style of gameplay and the, the controls where you're just using a stylus or in my envisioned version of the game using your thumb. But it actually works really well. Because all you're really doing in a Zelda game is you're exploring, you're finding these power-ups that help you get to the next part of the game, you're doing these dungeons that are all puzzle-based. You really don't need to have a whole lot of controls to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. The stylus worked really well because you just put your stylus where you want Link to go and he just walks there. And then in terms of combat, you had some different gestures that you could make. Uh-huh. And that would make Link do different things. Like you could have him slash his sword. You could, have, you could spin it around him and he would do a spin with his sword. The spin attack. The classic. You could uh, kind of jab and he would jab. It just really made a whole lot of sense. And I thought the combat was so much fun. And I haven't played a game that used these exact form of controls before. Mm -hmm. So I thought this is really unique. If they could bring this to smartphones, I think it would be a hit. Yeah, and it is interesting you say that you only need one finger or one stylus to play the whole game. Because when I'm looking for a mobile game, that's pretty much what I want. Right. You know, I don't really want to have to deal with a bunch of different inputs on the screen. I want that thing to be one finger. I think about the Grand Theft Auto games that have come to mobile mm -hmm. and they have built in controls. And let's be honest, they're clunky. They're hard to use. It's hard to use because you can't feel them. Right. You can't, there's no like feedback. So just having your thumb and that being the only thing you need is perfect. Additionally, you control link on the bottom screen exactly where your thumb would be if they were to just stack the screens on top of each other for a mobile game. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, Nintendo would want to figure out a way to monetize this game beyond probably the traditional way we might think about it. We might just imagine that they would just... Sell the game. Yeah, if they were to port this game to mobile, they may just charge one price and then that's the game. But they tried this with Super Mario Run and it didn't work. They tried to just charge $10 for it and then you get the whole game. I think I'm like the only person in the world who paid the $10 and liked Super Mario Run. Yeah. I liked it. <laughs> I don't think it worked for them because really what they're looking for is a recurring revenue stream. Yep. They want continuous revenue. And I think that the Zelda format kind of offers a couple different ways that they could go about doing this first way that I thought of that they could do this is they could give you one life per day and if you die the only way to get back in that day would be to purchase extra lives yeah I think they did something similar to that with Dr. Mario mobile I think it was something kind of like that so that to me makes a little bit of sense but I have some other options too okay another way they could do it is you could just pay for rupees oh yeah virtual currency because you could purchase hearts you could purchase shields, arrows, arrows, bombs, things like that. Yeah, you could purchase anything. And that would keep 
this revenue stream going as well. Mm -hmm. Especially if they reduce the amount of those things that were available in the world, which they might want to do. I'm not saying they should do that, but yeah. they could. They could figure out a way to make money off this game. And I think what you're saying makes sense. I just don't want them to go too far in the other direction because then people are just going to complain that it's just a cash grab and it's pay to win. Right. So Nintendo, if you're listening, don't get greedy. You know, monetize the game, but make it so that you can still play the game without paying to win. Because that, if there's one thing gamers hate in 2022 now, it's having to pay to win. So there's a couple of different ways that they might go about monetizing this. But I do have some other thoughts about why Spirit Tracks is a great choice for porting to mobile. One, Spirit Tracks is a standalone story. Now, there is another game, Phantom Hourglass, that uses the same control method as far as I know. I have mm -hmm. not played that game, but from what I've seen, it uses a very similar, if not the exact same control method. So that game might also make sense to port, but I haven't played it, so I can't really speak to that one. Uh -huh. But Spirit Tracks is unique in that it's a standalone story, and it's not a direct sequel like Phantom Hourglass is. Phantom right. Hourglass is a sequel to Wind Waker. Okay, I, was, I didn't really realize that. But I could also see, you know, having a game like Phantom Hourglass. I think if it has a similar control style, it, I think it could work as well. And who knows? They might be able to offer both of them. Right. You know, hey, this if we're just spitballing ideas, let's just, you know, keep going with it. Mm -hmm. But there are some possible negatives to doing something like this. One thought I have is that uh, the Zelda f formula isn't necessarily something that you can just pick up from time to time and play through. It kind of requires... A continuous playthrough maybe something that you play yeah you know it's not something that you could take off for a week and then come back and be exactly know what you what you need to do right it's got a lot going on one I think the game could benefit from having some objective markers to begin with so maybe just having a more clear objective system that they might be able to implement that would tell you hey here's what you need to do next here's your next task if they implemented something like that I think that it would be great I don't see why you wouldn't be able to just pick it up and say, okay, I'm going to do this. Right. No, that makes perfect sense to me. I mean, that's to me, that's a cornerstone of mobile gaming. You want to be able to just pick it up anytime, kill five minutes, close your phone. Another thought I had that I thought might stop something like this from working on mobile is that your thumb is much thicker than a stylus. Maybe yours is. <laughs> I shouldn't speak for everyone, but my thumb is a good bit thicker than a stylus. So I thought, well, there's a chance that your thumb could get in the way mm -hmm. of the action that's going on on screen. Yeah. Now, they may be able to work around that. They may be able to figure out, and maybe it's not as big of a deal as I'm thinking it might be, mm -hmm. but I could see the thumb kind of getting in the way, especially since you're controlling the main character. If your thumb is blocking the view of the main character, it probably wouldn't be that fun. Yeah. Well, there are a lot of smartphones that you can use, you know, a stylus with. I know you can't use like an Apple pencil on a, an iPhone because Apple's dumb. But, you know, Samsung's got their S Pen and they've got those folding phones with the big screens. It would probably be great for this. Just a random thought um, or potentially even an iPad. But I can definitely see how a smaller phone, especially like one of those mini iPhones, if you're just using your thumbs, that would be hard. Yes. And I think for, for a company like Nintendo to want to do something like this, to port an old game to mobile, they would want it to work pretty flawlessly. I oh, don't yeah. think they would want an experience that was in any way subpar. Another possible negative that I had thought of was that Spirit Tracks is a long game. It's about 15 hours, but maybe when you're talking about mobile games, you don't really want the game to even have any ending. You kind of want it to be a game that you can play forever in perpetuity yes in perpetuity that's exactly what i was thinking <laughs> because when you reach the end of spirit tracks that's the end of the game right. there's not really anything to go back and do right you're not buying any more rupees you're not buying any more bombs no more hearts you know this would certainly be a negative that i think would have to be addressed yeah because for a mobile game you really do want something that you can play forever and they would have to maybe continuously update the game. So maybe it makes more sense to take the formula or take the gameplay idea and maybe come up with an original game mm -hmm. that's not Spirit Tracks. Maybe an original game that uses the same general combat system and or same vibe or the same, you know, 
Yeah. You see what I'm saying here? Maybe some sort of game where they're always updating it with more dungeons or something like that. I mean, do Spirit Tracks have dungeons? Yes, it has. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it has okay. tons of dungeons. I think that would be a great idea. Maybe just an original Zelda game for mobile, but you, it kind of piggybacks on the the bones and the structure of games like Spirit Tracks and Phantom Hourglass. I think it would work really well for mobile. And I think that if Nintendo is interested in bringing Zelda to mobile, they should look at the games they already have. And who knows, maybe they could do something like that. And then in addition, if that's popular, maybe they could port Spirit Tracks, Phantom Hourglass. Mm -hmm. I think the options are here, and I don't think Nintendo is looking into them. I'm sure they are thinking what type of games make the most money. Right. And that's probably all they're interested in. When really they should be thinking, or I would like them to think about the games that they already have and how to utilize them in a way that might be a little more inventive in the mobile market. Yeah, I mean, I think Nintendo has a bit of a reputation for pushing their older games to the side. And then if they do eventually bring them back, maybe it's not the best experience. Mm -hmm. So this might be a way to kind of buck that trend, you know, build up a little more good faith. I would like to see it because Nintendo's got such great older games. Oh, yeah. And Spirit Tracks is a phenomenal game. And I hate that it's just rotting. You know, it's now left for dead on the DS. Yeah. I mean, who wants to be left for dead on a DS? This may seem like a crazy crackpot idea, but the whole time I was playing Spirit Tracks, this is all I kept thinking was, this should be on mobile. Randy, you're a freaking visionary. Tell us, guys. What do you think? Have you played Spirit Tracks? Do you think it would work on mobile? Am I crazy for thinking this? I might be crazy. <laughs> and don't forget to follow us over on Twitter. Our handle is at Game and Gig. Until next time, guys. I'm Randy. And I'm Daniel. And this has been Game and Gig. Peace out. Peace out.